Surfing has shown me that danger is real, but fear is a mental thing. Fear is something you can overcome, and I've had to learn to overcome it. When you're really in control of what you're doing and, and what you know your skills are, fear changes to calculated risk. I see nature as just patterns, and in the ocean, heavy conditions can just look random. But when you get out in the ocean, you start to feel what's happening with the swell and the interval between each wave. You start to recognize these patterns, and then you start to apply that to how you're going to use your skills. When I hear freak of nature, to me it sounds like something that stands out from the back. Somebody who's so persistent and they're never going to not get what they want. With all the information we have these days about health, that, you know, the skin doesn't get left behind. The skin health, well, being in the ocean, being in the sun all day my whole life, it's, it's super important. Especially when you're on surf trips, you surf all day long, you're just going to get fried. Uh, so you, you want to be prepared ahead of time. There aren't many sunscreens that I've been able to trust because there's so many chemicals in them. And I've been really adamant about not putting chemicals on my body. As you get older and you get sun damage and you realize that you have this one body to live in, you have to take care of it. Just like anyone else, I need sun protection and I need to fix my skin after I get out of the water too and if, when I'm done at the end of the day when I go to bed. It's good to be able to trust what you're putting on and know that someone else has done the work to make that thing the right product for you. With technology we have these days and understanding we have a science, we can start to formulate things that are absolutely incredible and beyond what we've had in the past. There's so many layers of consideration for the environment in this product. Everything down to the consideration to make sure that it's biomimicry. So it's mimicking molecules in nature like shark oil, but it's not made from shark oil. It's even considering in like the pH balance of skin, the skin microbiome, which can actually help us to coexist with the elements. I am on the go and outside all the time, so I love that, that I could just put on between dives or before a hike or before a surf. It's a plant-based water-resistant sunscreen, so water resistance is really important to me, obviously being in the water all the time. This also allows my skin to still breathe and it's beyond reef safe, so I can feel good putting it on my skin and knowing that I'm not harming the coral reef. I hope these products just simplify skincare for all of us who are out in the sun all the time. Two videos ago, I looked at Bold Threads and their SPAC manager. They've now, the stock price has dropped around probably 80% since they did their SPAC merger. We'll have to see what happens in the longer term. But I started looking after I saw that piece of news and put out that video to try and find out actual products on the market. Of course, we have their mycelium leather, and it looks like a lot of those products that they talk about on their website are really just initial prototypes that they did with different companies. Kind of how Perfect Day has done a number of prototypes now with different launch partners. And so that's done a number of years ago, and they don't actually have a lot of those prototypes for sale anymore. There's a few companies that are still selling Milo leather bags or wallets, but many companies as well, like Lululemon, for example, or Adidas, who partnered on different products, no longer actually sell those products. And so that was just really a limited time run. Similarly, for the Precision Fermentation Silk Thread, we had the tie, we had the beanie, we had the dress, we had a few products, and those were also limited production really prototype runs of the products. And so those products as well aren't actually really being sold yet. The one business that is starting is their vegan silk polypeptide. And so that's the powder that they get when they make the protein from precision fermentation before they then turn that into the actual threads. And that can be used really to sell to different cosmetics companies. So I managed to find a sunscreen by a company, Freaks of Nature. And this is started by a surfer. There's lots of really cool things about the sunscreen. I'm no sunscreen expert. Generally, I tend to go for your standard banana boat sunscreen. This one's quite a bit 
higher end, quite a bit of a higher price than I would usually pay on my sunscreen. I tried it a number of times, I really like it. It's not oily. That's kind of as far as my personal experience with sunscreen goes. So I'm gonna put a review by a big dermatologist who actually knows a bit about sunscreen and who has tried this. Let's check that out. And a patient mm. asked me about it yesterday. Asked me what my favorite like outdoor sunscreen is for like exercising to make sure it stayed on and I had no clue. So what was the ones that you like? This is the active sunscreen category and it's very difficult in my opinion because I think for most runners, athletes, whatever, swimmers, the main concern is functionality that it one doesn't wipe off your wipe off, rub off, rinse off, and then two, that it doesn't irritate your eyes because you are sweating or water's getting your eyes. And so just purely how functional and effective it is and does it irritate your eyes or what my recommendations are best based off on this category, they're not aesthetic. That generally these may not be aesthetic, but they're functional. If you are active, if you're an athlete, or if you're an outdoors person, it's worth checking this one out. So Kelly Slater is one of the greatest surfers of all time. And this sunscreen in particular is called Freaks of Nature. That's the brand. Inside this packaging, sorry, that was upside down. Daily Defender Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 30. It is 100% mineral. This is the constellation of this product. I find that generally the mineral ingredients like zinc, titanium, especially zinc, is probably the least irritating. The problem then is the balance with aesthetics. So this one in particular hits all three spots. Main things in this though are the non-nano zinc, the squalane oil, and it's a pretty simple product. So let me just show you what this looks like. The packaging here, it's plastic. It's not meant to feel fancy or be fancy. It's pretty runny. It's not super, super heavy. Now I'll put it on um, and you be the judge, but don't judge it from its initial blend. You really need to let this one sit. To put it to the test, I have now used this over a period of two or three weeks. I bought it as a pre-order, so um, I was an early user. And I have run two 5Ks in it, which is just partly my normal run routine. I've gone surfing twice. I have exercised in it multiple times, and I have used it on a daily basis. If you are looking for an active sunscreen, if you're an active person, highly recommend this Freaks of Nature by Kelly Slater. Things you'll notice, it is not invisible. And to expect a non-tinted, non-nano zinc or mineral sunscreen to be completely invisible, it's just never going to happen. But I will say, as compared to other similarly made sunscreens, it, it's acceptable. It blends, and if you have a lighter skin tone, it's going to blend really well. But it will not be invisible for anyone with darker skin tones. It will not be invisible for anyone with facial hair, but again, it's acceptable. With all things considered, I think effectiveness is outstanding. Gentleness is outstanding. Top tier elegance in cosmetics is acceptable. So for that active person where you just need a sunscreen that's going to be very, very effective, very functional, very gentle, not get in the way of you performing your task at hand, I think this is a terrific option. I thought it'd be kind of cool to see what kind of products is Bolt Threads going to be putting out what kind of companies are they going to be partnering with? What kind of cosmetics will you be able to buy with their protein? For this, their marketing is really around the vegan shark squalene, which is something that you find in shark's liver. And today, although it's probably still sourced from sharks, a lot of it is sourced from olive oil. And what Freaks of Nature does is they take it from of course, persistent fermentation, but they use cane sugar, which just uses a lot less land and resources than olive oil. So there's points to that. And that's really where a lot of the marketing here is. But of course, they also do use the vegan silk polypeptide from both threads. So in the long term, we'll have to see where it goes. I'm pretty interested to see what kind of products we're going to get from both threads. We'll have to see where it goes. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.